Thank you. Admiral Gilday, I want to talk about your choice to include books like How to Be an Anti-Racist and The New Jim Crow on your professional reading list. We discussed this last week in our phone call. Normally, I wouldn't disclose that conversation, but you said the exact same thing in front of the Armed Services Committee in the House last week, which I found deeply disappointing. When you're asked questions about this, you characterize uh, it as a criticism of sailors for being weak. Um, that is a straw man. It's not a criticism of sailors being weak. It's a criticism of your decision to include these books on your professional reading list, which ensigns and sailors across your service take very seriously. So I just want to give you a sampling of some of the things that are included in books like this. Uh, that the notion that capitalism is essentially racist and racism is essentially capitalist. That the only remedy for past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy for present discrimination is future discrimination. That some individuals by virtue of his or her race are inherently oppressive uh, or privileged while others are victimized or oppressed. Uh, that individuals can bear some kind of collective responsibility or collective guilt for the actions committed by members of his or her race. Um, Admiral Gilday, how did these books get on your reading list? So I chose a variety of books. There are over 50 books on my reading list to give our sailors a wide range of, uh, of information from which I hope they can make fast facts-based decisions on uh, both their ability to look outwardly at uh, potential aggressors like China and Russia, as well as looking inwardly and being honest with ourselves in areas that we need to improve. In talking to sailors over the past year, it's clearly obvious to me and others uh, that the murder of George Floyd and the events surrounding that, the discussions in this country about racism, which go back for years and years and years, um, are still a painful part, uh, part of our culture. And that talking about them, understanding them is the best approach. Um, and, that, and that offering books like Kendi's for people to read. And they don't have to agree with every assertion that Kendi makes. I, I, don't, uh, I don't accept every assertion that Kendi makes, and I wouldn't think that, uh, that all sailors would as well. But they need to be exposed to it so that they're making facts-based. We, we need critical thinkers in the Navy and, I, and, and throughout the military in our enlisted force, again, who not only think outwardly but inwardly so that they make objective, hopefully objective facts-based uh, decisions in a or draw conclusions in a world that it's increasingly more difficult to get an unbiased view at a at a really tough problem. Even if they're looking at things on social media, uh, artificial intelligence associated with those platforms feeds them more of whatever they tend to look at. I'm offering them uh, one book uh, among 53 as a different perspective. And, uh, and, it's and you're saying, yes, I agree. There's a lot of information like that on social media and in our culture. And you're saying as the senior leader of the Navy that you want 18 year old sailors and 22 year old ensigns to read a book that asserts that capitalism is essentially racist. Do you, do you agree that capitalism is essentially racist? Sir, I'm, I'm with all due respect, I'm not going to engage without understanding the context of of statements like that. But these are the so, same say, Ad, Admiral, this say is, I'm sorry, my, our, our time is very limited here. Um, I, I know you said this in the House Armed Services Committee last week. In what context could the claim that capitalism is essentially racist possibly be something with which you would agree? So I have to go back to the book to take a look at that. But, but again, this comes down to trusting sailors who are running nuclear power plants on submarines at uh, hundreds of feet under the water under the polar ice cap uh, that are maintaining the highest, uh, uh, the most complicated and complex jets in the world. Um, we, we put them in harm's way every day. I think, I, sir, I, I believe that we can trust them to, to read books like that and to draw reasonable conclusions. Well, it's not, it's not just a matter of trusting them. It's a matter of how they spend their time. And you, as the chief of naval operations, are suggesting in your professional reading list that it's a worthwhile endeavor for our sailors and ensigns to, re to spend their time reading books like these as opposed to, say, books on maritime strategy or basic seafaring skills, which also are included on your list. But there's plenty that are not included on your list that I think would also benefit them. I mean, the Navy has had genuine cultural problems now for many years, whether it's the McCain and the Fitzgerald having collisions in the Western Pacific, the Bonhomme Richard catching fire in port, the Fat Leonard scandal, a Navy SEAL team being recalled from Iraq because of a breakdown in basic military order, a uh, patrol boat in the Persian Gulf ascent, surrendering to what is little more than Iranian fishing boat. 
The Navy has had some genuine cultural problems and drift and lack of focus that it needs to address. Assigning books like these and encouraging your sailors to take the time to do so is not a way for the Navy to regain its focus, Admiral.